because I haven't made enough friends tonight, once again, Bastian Andrew with the AMA speaking um, on behalf of over 26,000 units, owners, and developers here in the city of Scottsdale. Um, once again, we just wish to express our concerns related to the city's proposed increase of water development impact fees. Um, that will increase development impact fees for multifamily developers by 12.5%. Um, furthermore, it should be noted that to our knowledge, not a single stakeholder meeting was held to discuss these substantial fee changes. If meetings were indeed held, the AMA at least was not included in any of those discussions. And for comparison, virtually every city or town across the valley that adopts new land use assumptions, infrastructure improvement plans, and the ensuing impact fees conducts multiple stakeholder meetings to solicit feedback from the development community. As noted in a comprehensive economic study conducted by Elliott D. Pollock and Company, the state of Arizona must build hundreds of thousands of new market rate and affordable housing units by 2030 to match pre-pandemic demand. Considering that Scottsdale only has 26,000 apartment units and the city has grown by nearly 41,000 residents over the past decade, it is imperative that we examine the conditions that led to this housing supply shortage and proactively remove those barriers to future development. From Stanford to Clemson, Brookings to Cato, and Obama to Trump, one universally agreed upon hindrance to housing development includes the imposition of costly development impact fees. In 2019, President Trump issued an executive order establishing a White House Council on eliminating regulatory bar barriers to affordable housing in which he stated, federal, state, local, and tribal governments impose a multitude of regulatory barriers, laws, regulations, and administrative practices that hinder the development of housing. These regulatory barriers include inordinate impact or developer fees. These regulatory barriers increase the costs associated with development and as a result drive down the supply of affordable housing. They are the leading factor in the growth of housing prices across metropolitan areas in the United States. Similarly, in 2016, President Obama stated in his 2016 Housing Development Toolkit, when rental and production costs go up, the cost of each unit of housing with public assistance increases, putting a strain on already insufficient public resources for affordable housing and causing existing programs to serve fewer households. When development costs are high, the cost recuperation is passed along to the renter, ultimately undercutting and undermining the express purpose of developing more housing, affordability. The proposed increase in water development impact fees is a step in the wrong direction to reducing these costs and rectifying the issue of housing affordability in Scottsdale. As was once again inferred in today's, in today's Republic article, as Council's intent, quote, to restrict development and preserve Old Town will do nothing but to hinder the very goals which the city seeks to achieve. To this end, we respectfully request that the council reconsider increasing these water development fees at a time when, if anything, the city should be searching for ways to increase housing construction, not limiting it or making it more expensive. Once again, I thank you for your time, and if you have any further questions, I remain. I do. Uh, previously, you said something like you expect uh, the metropolitan area of Phoenix or the Valley to absorb 210 thousand or what what was that number so across the state of arizona that was two hundred thirty thousand units total okay and then i heard you say that you expected scottsdale to ex uh, absorb fifty one thousand this is based off of 2019 estimations but yes about excuse 51, me sir so you're saying scottsdale arizona according to your bosses believes that we should absorb 25 percent of the need of the whole state of arizona so it's actually according to the Elliott D. Pollock. I, I, I'm, I, I'm just clarifying that because you are way, way out of line in your numbers. And I will say this as well, that there is the law of scarcity. The law of scarcity is like gravity. It governs everything, whether it's fuel, school teachers, education. The law of scarcity of water is one of the most valuable and precious assets. And if you're asking the city of Scottsdale by Mr. Pollock's reasoning and you're entering it into the record, expecting that we're going to carry 25% of the water load due to these 52,000, you could take that back to your bosses and say it was heard very clearly what you intend to do. And I don't believe that we can sustain that because there is the law of scarcity. I think you should review that a little bit. And I thank you, I understand, and you have to understand that my job is to make sure that development pays for itself. We will not discount the apartments or the multifamily and have the regular citizen or the businesses that are here subsidize that so that you can 
provide 25 percent of those units in Scottsdale, Arizona. So I think we're concluded that wasn't a, a, a question that was just some feedback for you. And just as a point of clarification for you, Mayor Ortega, Scottsdale currently holds about 22 percent of the entire state's apartment inventory. That's well, where that number is. I will also from. say, if you look at the AIA numbers from architects and city planning, they say that the city should never, a city should, their multifamily combined should be less than 20 or 20 percent to be sustainable and so forth. And I think if you're looking at uh, what our total stock is of, of dwelling units, that 70,000 in that number, 54,000 plus 26 that we have now, it would be way in excess of uh, something that sustainability uh, would allow. That's some pushback, and I hope uh, we can come to uh, a good conclusion at, at some point in, in between. Uh, the subject is water and where, whether development fees should be uh, paid in full, and um, uh, I think that message is sent. I see Councilmember Milhaven and Councilwoman Caputi has, ha have a, a statement. Um, Mr. Andrew, I'd like to apologize for the way you were spoken to this evening. I think we can disagree more respectfully, so I apologize. And the other was what I understood you to have said is that there's demand for additional housing, that the community is short over 200,000, and that your belief is the demand in Scottsdale is for another 50,000, not that you were expecting that we would build anything, but simply telling us what the demand was. Correct. And just to elaborate further, that's across all different asset types. That's not just multifamily, that's single family as well. Just to clarify. Thank you, sir. Um, Councilwoman Caputi. My understanding is that this is just a public hearing to talk about these proposed changes. Um, so I just want to make the comment that I think it's so interesting that we're having this conversation, exactly, as Councilwoman Melhaven said, directly following a, a conversation about infrastructure in Old Town. So I just want to underscore the fact that we in Scottsdale make development pay for infrastructure and public services and facilities. That's all. Development pays for itself in Scottsdale. This is, I mean, this is, we make developers pay for what they they do here in our city, and, and thank goodness for them, because we get infrastructure and, and facilities and wonderful things, so. Thank you, Councilwoman Whitehead. That's correct. We do make our fees based on true costs, and so you're suggesting that all of our citizens subsidize um, the people you work for in order to build apartments with some kind of, frankly, empty promise that that'll somehow help our uh, the, the future residents. I absolutely believe that um, development has to pay for itself, and I know that that is how our fees are um, computed. So I'm very comfortable with uh, Mr. Biesmeier's presentation and his recommendations. Thank you. 